Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Toolbox Tuesday. Hey, I wanted to talk about three things that we uh, we see when it comes to case coils. You know, you, we, here we have your your, your typical A coil, um, but sometimes there's some issues with those. And, and what are some of the, the common things that we see in the industry as it relates to our, our friend, the old, the old A coil here? Well, one of the things is that they'll freeze up. And so you'll get a call like there's no there's no AC and the, the, the house isn't cooling. You'll go out there and you'll find ice um, sometimes at the evaporator coil, sometimes just on the line. One of the number one things that we always look at when we're dealing with these case coils is airflow, a possible airflow issue or lack of airflow. Now, one of the things that could be the culprit there could be a dirty filter. A dirty filter could cause a, re a airflow restriction and cause us to, to ice up. We could have a dirty outdoor unit. That could be the cause or we could have a faulty blower motor. Um, nonetheless, if we have a drop in airflow or some type of airflow restriction, we could see um, our, our coils, our evaporator coils not functioning properly. The second thing that we will look for is dirt. We could have this whole area impacted with, with dirt. Sometimes you'll have homeowners that have a lot of pets, um, a lot of dust and, and dander in the house and that can get on the coil if they don't have adequate filtration or adequate um, um, filters in their in their system um, or if they haven't changed them in a long time or if the filter is just missing some people don't even know that they have a filter and there's not even one there to begin with uh, but nonetheless dirt and bacteria and things like that can collect on the surface allowing for inadequate transfer of, of, uh, of air across that coil which could cause us some issues and then the third thing is that moisture, right? So moisture, this, this coil is gonna have condensation on it. We can get a moisture buildup and that moisture could allow for things to stick to that coil and, and, um, and impact that coil uh, so that we don't get a transfer there. Also, uh, depending on if we have a lack of refrigerant, just the temperature, right? Because that temperature drops down really cool, right? And we could actually be below freezing. When we look at our gauges, sometimes we'll notice on our low side that we could be sitting below uh, 30 or 32, degree, 32 degrees, indicating a potential for that coil to freeze up on the inside for us. One of the things that you have to remember is when you're standing outside, at your condenser unit and you've got your gauges in your hand and you're looking at that low side gauge, that's kind of giving you a picture of what's going on at your evaporator coil. So again, just to kind of reiterate, we could have well, number one, an airflow issue. Number two, we could have a dirty coil. And number three, we could have a refrigerant issue. All three of those things in conjunction with the various things that go with each one of those sections could cause us to have some of those problems with our evaporator coil. Hope that was very helpful. As always, we want you to tune in and, and chime in and subscribe. Uh, make sure that you uh, leave us some of your comments and some of your experiences with evaporator coils. I'm sure we've all have a story or two about an iced up coil that we've seen. We'd love to hear about it. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Toolbox Tuesday. We'll see you next time. Hey, we absolutely love our HVAC community. We want you to continue to tune in. We want you to continue to, to leave us your, your comments. Uh, make sure you click below to subscribe. We definitely want to hear from you, and we'll see you next time.